So in this video, I, I just wanted to quickly um, do a recap and go over everything that we've learned so far in this course. Um, so if you remember, we started off going over the general concepts about entry and output. Um, now you're familiar with what loaders are, you're familiar with plugins, and you're familiar with different modes for development and production. Uh, we also did a whole bunch of different things. So if you remember, we set up, uh, obviously installed and set up Webpack from scratch. Um, we set up our dev server here. We set up source maps. We set up hot module reloading. Um, we set up and configured Babel so that we can write future JavaScript today. We set up CSS and SCSS loaders and the source maps for those. We set up post CSS and how to set up and configure the various plugins for post CSS and also how to distinguish between different environments for production and uh, development environments for loading different plugins for post CSS. Um, we went over a whole bunch of different plugins. So now you're familiar with how Webpack plugins worked. We have this HTML plugin here and then we've got this mini CSS extract plugin here for minifying and compressing our CSS for, for production builds. And you also learned how to extrapolate um, various Webpack configs into separate files. So we ended up in the end with three total files. Again, the common is uh, configuration and options that and plugins that will be shared between both dev and production. Then we have a dev specific file and a production specific file. And then at the very end, you learn all about code splitting so that um, now when you have uh, different JavaScript files that all depend and share the same kind of third-party library or it even could be some of your own utils or your own functions that you write as your project grows. Now those um, separate files will no longer include the entire library or function. Everything will be split out into its own separate chunk that keeps you know your bundles super small, it keeps the network requests small, and it keeps your page load speeds really quick and you know it's that's always good for the end users so I hope you guys got a, a lot out of this course um, I tried to keep it you know pretty short but I tried to pack in as much content as I possibly could um, I know this course is free but my goal was to basically give you like 80 percent understanding of what webpack is so now you should be completely comfortable with reading and creating your own webpack files either from scratch or when you jump into a project that already exists, now you can be able to figure out what's going on, modify it, add plugins, loaders, and things like that as needed. Um, but I've also included some additional bonus videos that really have nothing to do with Webpack specifically. So, um, but make sure to check those out because I think they're super useful. So I'm going to show you how to um, set up and configure Jest for unit tests, how to set up uh, ESLint for linting, prettier for your JavaScript formatting. And then I'm going to show you this cool tool called um, Husky and Lint Stage. And that's going to, before each time you do like a git commit, it's going to run ESLint and prettier over your files to make sure that all the formatting and all the, um, the linting is correct. So that way if there's any errors with any linting, you won't be able to commit. It's a really, really cool tool. So again, I hope, hope you guys got a lot out of this course. If there's any questions or you get stuck, feel free to reach out to me in the forums or ask me questions, send me messages, and I'll be sure to get back to you as soon as I can.